My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Now, there is a saying that to a man with a hammer, everything is a nail. This certainly applies to me. As a cardiologist, I am always thinking of heart health and heart disease. More recently, I was at a pretty raucous party and I saw a bunch of overweight, middle-aged men smoking, drinking and overeating. And I couldn't help thinking uh, of all the damage that was potentially happening in their heart arteries. This I do all the time. However, what was very interesting was that at the same party, there were lots of similarly overweight, smoking and overeating women. But for some reason, my mind did not instinctually make me think of their heart risk like it did for the men. When I got home, I realized that perhaps inadvertently, I carry a bias in my mind that heart disease is a man's problem. The truth is that this is completely wrong. Heart disease is everyone's problem. And in some ways, the persisting and incorrect belief that it is men who die of heart disease and women tend to die of breast cancer has led uh, to women being disadvantaged when it comes to the screening, diagnosis and treatment of heart disease. So today what I wanted to do was focus on heart disease in women and talk about how it may differ to how we think of heart disease in men. This video is therefore entitled Heart Disease in Women Addressing the Gender Gap. Heart disease is by far the commonest cause of death in women. If we look at the top causes of death in women in the Western world, the top three are heart disease, stroke and Alzheimer's. Breast cancer actually is the ninth commonest cause of death. Even though heart disease is as common in women as in men, the way we think about it, the way it presents, its risk factors and the way we treat it seems to differ. The first thing to say is that endogenous estrogen during the fertile period seems to delay the manifestation of coronary disease and therefore in general women tend to present with heart disease later on in life compared to their male counterparts. It is believed that women present an average of 10 years later in life than men. If we look at overall mortality from heart disease since the 80s, mortality in men has noticeably decreased with better recognition, uh, a sustained focus on modifying lifestyle and aggressive treatment. However, when we look at women, the mortality in women from heart disease does not appear to have improved as noticeably probably because medical professionals, academics, researchers and the media don't focus as much on it uh, as being also a woman's disease. And this therefore can lead to less recognition, less aggressive risk factor modification and delays in treatment. Women as a population tend to also be largely underrepresented in clinical research and clinical studies of heart disease. What all this means is that there is a lot less awareness of heart disease in women. In fact, there was a survey in Canada which highlighted the lack of awareness of how sinister heart disease and its risk factors can be in women. And a bunch of women were interviewed and actually two thirds of women who would have ordinarily be classified by doctors as high risk, two thirds of these women considered themselves as low or moderate risk. In addition, it's also possible that because of this lack of awareness, women may be more likely to ignore the symptoms. And in general, women you know, tend to put their families first, their duties first, and therefore it's possible that a lot of women, uh, because of this lack of awareness, tend to put uh, their symptoms or their concerns on the back burner. I think it's true to say not only is there a lack of awareness in the general public, but there's also a lack of awareness and emphasis from healthcare professionals. There is definitely an unconscious sex bias in favor of men. 
Clinical studies have shown that women are significantly less likely to be screened for heart disease compared to men, almost 12% less likely. In addition, women as a population are about 10% less likely to reach optimal targets for risk factors such as blood pressure, blood sugar, physical activity compared to men. Uh, almost 10% of women are treated less aggressively than men for heart disease. I think it's also worth noting that in terms of risk factors for heart disease, women have additional risk factors to the traditional risk factors that we worry about in men. In men, we tend to concentrate on smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, body mass index, cholesterol, and lower socioeconomic status. And whilst it's true that these are also risk factors in women, it appears that smoking, diabetes, and a lower socioeconomic class seem to have a much stronger relative effect in women compared to men. Diabetes, for example, seems to confer an additional 40 to 45% risk in women compared to men. Total cholesterol, interestingly, seems to have a, more, have a stronger relative effect in men. It's also uh, important to know that women have additional risk factors for heart disease. And these include uh, early uh, onset of menses, early menopause, a history of hysterectomy, early age at first birth, a history of miscarriages or stillbirth, gestational diabetes and preeclampsia. Unfortunately, as doctors, we rarely ask about these and we should be asking about these risk factors. Another difference is that women may present differently compared to men. As a cardiologist, when I am trying to work out whether patient's symptoms could be a manifestation of coronary artery disease, I'm generally looking for symptoms of chest pressure or heaviness, which is made worse by physical exertion. And this is true for men. However, in women, women are more likely, in addition to chest discomfort, are far more likely to complain of symptoms of breathlessness, nausea, vomiting, the discomfort may be more over the back or the shoulder or in the jaw. Uh, in addition, women tend to be more likely to complain of symptoms relating to emotional stress rather than physical stress. Unfortunately, sometimes this relationship with emotional stress results in a doctor erroneously diagnosing a woman with anxiety when it may be a sign of heart disease. Uh, there was a study that suggested that because women may present differently than men, there may be a 30 to 40% increased risk of the doctor making an incorrect initial diagnosis. And this then translates into a significant delay in getting definitive treatment. And this has also been shown to lead to a higher mortality. We also know that in those women who do have a heart attack and survive it, there is a higher risk of recurrent events and mortality. So, as you can see, there is a real gender gap when it comes to the diagnosis, of management, diagnosis and management of heart disease in women. I think it is so important that there's significantly more focus on this in the media and within the medical profession. And we desperately need uh, women advocates, champions, to call out for more research and more screening to be done in the female population. We also desperately need more cardiologists who are women. There was a very interesting study which showed that female patients of male cardiologists did worse than their male counterparts, but there was no such gender gap in patients of female physicians. So we need more female cardiologists. So I hope you found this useful. If you or anyone you know has risk factors or symptoms uh, that I've mentioned, then please do not put off seeing a doctor and do not let the doctor tell you that it is stress or anxiety without doing a comprehensive battery of tests on your heart. I hope you found this useful. All the best.